Welcome to the world of John. Today we're going to look at language. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at the differences between English language, in English, that is the way in which I would speak it, and American styles of English as spoken in the Philippines. Uh, I'm going to be interrupted and assisted or unassisted by our four-year-old Rowan. Goo -goo. Taking as my inspiration, as my places to start, this, this, this little article here. And you can find this on www.boardpanda.com forward slash British American English differences dot 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 um it i can't express this there's so much american film and american culture that here in the uk we tend not to really recognize the differences which is why i've had to go and find a source um to start with to to, to talk to you about oh the other thing is that i've been told i speak too fast <laughs> Uh, Philippine friends of ours, Filipino friends of ours, don't find me difficult to follow. I'm not too fast. But I think if you're over-concentrating, then maybe my very, what we call, received pronunciation uh, is, is, is difficult to pick out what you're listening for if you're used to American. Anyway, let's start with some of the differences. I was going to film this in our garden. In the UK, we call it a garden, and in American English, it's called the lot or the backyard. And the, to me, a yard is just a terrible, dirty place, you know, an uncared for place. Whereas a garden is manicured, it's looked after. In our house, Risa does it. It's clothing. Now, I'm wearing a polo shirt. I'm not quite sure what the Americans would uh, call that. But my little... Bless you, Rowan. Uh, my little cheat sheet says, for example, that in the UK we have trainers. Uh, soft foot... So, sorry. Soft shoes. Um, I used to have basketball trainers basketball shoes when I was when I was a kid in American they're called sneakers uh, we don't use the word here sneakers uh, a jumper or a pullover in English in America would be called a sweater a, a sweater for us is slightly different a sweater is more like a sweatshirt uh, rather than uh, knitwear um, which is really what defines a, a jumper or a pullover. In the UK, we will uh, wear a three-piece suit sometimes when we want to look very smart. I, I hardly ever wear one. Uh, and the inner jacket, we would call a waistcoat. But in America, uh, American English, it's known as a vest. So, so that's different. And then the one that really tickles me is uh, in English... You, to hold your trousers up, we have braces. In America, they're called suspenders. <laughs> Which in English is naughty language, because this suspenders, suspenders is what ladies wear to hold up their stockings. And gentlemen never see or know anything about suspenders. Do they? <laughs> uh, when we visit the Philippines, I have to get used to American terminology for food. Uh, and between Lisa and I, it causes quite some, some consternation. So, what the Americans call French fries, we call chipped potatoes. They're chips, okay? Very confusing. Because in American and, and uh, Filipino use of English, crisps are potato chips. Or potato chips are the English call crisps. Will you, will you? A cookie, in the American language, we call a biscuit. But again, because of the influence of American culture in the UK, 
uh, a cookie has taken on a new meaning in English language. A cookie is a soft-scented biscuit, um, usually with chocolate in it, uh, or with sultanas in it, you know, with their small little fruit. So what I find interesting is how American English in English is taking on a new <laughs> English meaning. Does that, does that make sense to you? It makes sense to me. Uh, and then the final one on the, the uh, list here is peckish in English. Now, peckish means I'm feeling a little hungry. As a, in a, it, this crib list says that in American, you would say I'm hungry. Now, we say I'm hungry, we mean we want a meal. When I'm peckish, I want a little snack. If you're really interested in English and English culture, you might want to find a series of books by, uh, about a character called Winnie the Pooh. They're written by a guy, A. A. Milne. The Winnie the Pooh stories were written for A. A. Milne's son as part of the go, go, to bed, go to bed routine, tell you a story, tell you a story. And the main character, Pooh, is a bit like me. He's a bit too big round the middle. And he's always feeling peckish. <laughs> around about 11, he's feeling peckish. And, 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 and time for a little something, a little uh, morsel of food. That's, a morsel is a, is a small amount. Vegetables! Well, you must have your vegetables. Rowan says vegetables are very, very important for you. Uh, there are some differences here. We have a... You, you, in, in American English, you have a zucchini, which really to me sounds Italian. Zucchini. And we call them courgettes. But the interesting thing is, in my crazy memory, I can't remember courgettes, and I tend to call them zucchini anyway. Aubergines. Uh, I love, love aubergine. I love the way Risa prepares Filipino aubergine. But I cannot get used to the American term which is eggplant eggplant it just puts me off eggplant <laughs> sorry i've got a terrible sense of humor i've got a terrible sense of humor uh we have runner beans um or, or string beans we usually call them runner beans um americans do call them string beans but uh they, they, we have also french beans which are slightly different again French beans are very, very small and got little pointy ends. They're rather lovely. Uh, a runner bean is a longer one and tends to be a bit stringy, which I guess is why they're called uh, string beans. And we often eat what uh, the Americans would call baked potato. And that, that has some English usage, but it's more traditionally known as a jacket potato. So that's a potato in its skin, put in the oven, um, 180 degrees <laughs> for about 45 minutes um, it shouldn't be wrapped it shouldn't be pierced uh, and why am I telling you this? well because I love cooking that's why in our terms of our housing we live in houses which are two stories or more quite often three or we live in a bungalow, which is a single story. A bungalow in Australian usage, as I understand it, is like a garden shed. Um, I hope I haven't used another term that's not. <laughs> uh, that is to say, a, li a, li a little place made of woods that you keep <laughs> tools and things in. Um, or we live in a block of flats. Now, in, in, in American English, a block of flats um, is known as an apartment building in which you have an apartment. But we would have a flat in a block of flats. Uh, in Cebu, a condo, condominium, is a really, really popular term. We just don't use that in our English everyday usage. We don't have condos. It's um, a very, very American thing. The nearest thing we would have to a condo is a flat. Um, and if it's uh, a single 
bedroom, living room, kitchen, bathroom, we would tend to call that a studio apartment. Just We have ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor, blah, 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 up to the nth floor. In American and Filipino language um, usage, there's the first floor, which is on the ground, the second floor, which is one up, the third floor, which is one up, fourth floor, etc., etc. So the, if somebody in English says to you on the first floor, then they're actually meaning in the American usage on the second floor. <laughs> Where's your flat? Oh, it's on the first floor. Just keep looking on both floors. <laughs> <laughs> the rapid transport system, um, certainly around London and other cities, we would call the underground. In France, it's known as the metro. In American, it's the subway. Even if it's not sub, even if it's above ground, it's a subway. Um, we tend to call our, uh, our network as well the underground in London. Um, and other cities don't really have quite the same um, connotation because we don't have the, the, the same amount of underground rail, railway. We have trams. Um, trams are very, very common in Europe. And I know that in Manila uh, there is a rapid transport system. And I'm not sure whether you call that a tram or you call that a subway or, or, or what you would call that. A tram um, these days is a small train that can go on roads as well as to to go on railways. I, I, sorry, I don't mean it comes off the railway onto the road. I mean the rails. The railway goes through through the roads, um, and there are different regulations for those. As uh, yeah, light rest in the UK is where you would is, is a pharmacy is where you would go to get the your necessary drugs or medications. Uh, in America, it's a pharmacy or a drug store. Uh, not many people use phone booths, as they're called in America now, um, but we would always call it a phone box. Um, everybody, I think, laughs at the British because we queue. <laughs> we love to make queues. And certainly when I started to travel uh, in, in, in Europe and, and um, in what, what used to be Eastern Europe, I could not get the way that people did not line up. They did not form queues. Uh, it would be a crowd of people. Well, who can get on the plane or who can get on the bus or who can get on the train first? And to us, that was very, very strange. So in American, you form a line and we form a queue. It's uh, a strange difference. Now the car. The car can be, uh... it's all right, I'm just listening to downstairs. I don't know whether you can hear it. The car is a real source of confusion. Um, the usual layout of the car is the engine, let's do it this way, the, the engine is at the front, okay? The engine's at the front, and then you've got the cabin where people sit, and then you've got whatever's at the back, all right? So in, in American, I'll do it that way around because it's probably easier for you, in American, the front of the car, where the engine is, the cover is known as a hood. But we call that a bonnet. Uh, the back of the car is the trunk, where you would put luggage or, if you're a gangster, dead bodies and things like that. Not to be mentioned. We call that the boot. <laughs> I don't know how that came about, um, calling it the boot, but it's a boot. Um, it says on my crib list here that um, the thing that goes to show that you're turning left, left, left or right. When I was a kid in English, we call that the indicator um, or the traffic. Sorry, let me try again. When I was a kid, we would call that the trafficator. <laughs> it shows here as the indicator, so that's the English. Um, but in American, apparently, it's called a blinker. <laughs> a blinker is not like that in English. Blinking is um, 
is a word that means something quite naughty, um, sometimes something that you don't like very much. We spell tire, T-Y-R-E, whereas in American English, and you'll see it in signs in the Philippines, it's spelled T I R E. Please don't for, huh? Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> bye bye.